We are back. It's John Pollock, John Ramdeen, and Robin Black. Heading in next week, the UFC will be here in town for UFC 206 at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto, headlined by Max Holloway and Anthony Pettis for the Interim Featherweight Championship. You're also going to get to see Donald Cerrone taking awesome. on Matt Brown. Uh, this is a card that's gone through many different versions. This looks to be the finalized one, which will include Tim Kennedy taking on Kelvin Gastelum. And uh, looking ahead to this week, John, uh, what in particular uh, has your most interest heading into this? I mean, you got to... Max Holloway, Anthony Pettis, you know, yes, it's for the interim championship. I'm, I'm not really concerned about that. I'm concerned that I'm going to see two of the best fighters at 145 pounds that are certainly going to affect the landscape. We're going to see some beauty. We're going to see some creativity. We're going to see some violence with these guys. And on top of that, you could see Donald Cerrone and Matt Brown create havoc inside of the cage. Du Ho Choi, Cub Swanson, the return of Jordan Meehan on the card, Calvin Gastelum, Tim Kennedy. Jordan Meehan's return Just, is, it's to me, it's so... Uh, forgotten. Yeah, they that's don't perfect know. That's, for him. That's, that's, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. Let's just slide in under the radar. We'll see him. We're going to go to the open workouts, which I always really enjoy. We don't get to travel as much uh, because we're, we do a lot of the work here in the studio. But I, what, the open workouts is one of the things I really like. People because... watching you watching the open workouts. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has ever followed our good buddy James Lynch's video blogs, but there was one. I think it was 189 week where he's doing it and, we're, and he pans over to Robin and he's watching them working out. And that to me, it's as entertaining yeah. as watching uh, Chuck Liddell watch a fight. <laughs> I, I, you know, I just... I just get so much out of watching the martial arts. I really, really do. I'm working on the Duho Choi Cub Swanson breakdown right now, and it's just such a joy to do it. Like, you're, you're analyzing two of the great martial artists. Duho Choi is only 25 years old, and they're so different. They're like, Choi goes in and he assesses, and he analyzes, and he executes. That's it. And then Cub Swanson is inspired by the moment and paints and creates within there. And trying to tell that story outside of just, this is an elbow, this is a pivot, and try to differentiate that in a way that you can make people uh, feel it, that is a, an assignment that I'm just thrilled to have. And I get, I'll work on it all weekend and shoot it Monday. Once that's behind, I'm just gonna go on Wednesday and just watch the move and see what else I can learn. Super cool. I'm not expecting this to be the most anticipated fight at UFC 206, but in a strange way, it does have some interesting stakes attached to it, and that is Nikita Krylov and mm. Misha Serkinov. Yep, of course. We're in a, I think those two were both kind of impacted by Daniel Cormier and Anthony Johnson being moved. Mm -hmm. We're now hearing Daniel Cormier, he's going to have surgery, probably looking at an April return. Because had that fight happened that same night, and you're coming out of this, Ryan Bader has not re-signed as of yet, John Jones is on the shelf. The winner of that fight could very well have received the title fight just if the winner of that title fight wanted a quick fight. I don't think that necessarily applies, but if Bader were to leave this company, which when I talked to Scott Coca this week, when his exclusive period's up, they are very willing to talk with Bader. I mean, that's where the light heavyweight division is, where this is a, a fight of importance at 205 pounds. Yeah, well, I was, Misha Serkinov was here in studio yesterday, and he talked about those things. You know, this is a game that you can't map things out. You can have a plan. It's okay, I want to get better at this. You work on these things, and you get better at that. You want to improve every time you step foot inside of the cage. But it's all you, timing. It's all timing. Look how hard it is to get a middleweight title fight right. now as compared to the way it fell into Michael Bisping's yeah. lap, essentially, two yeah. weeks out. Exactly, yeah. and that's what Serkinov says. See, it was, wasn't that long ago I was outside of the UFC. People didn't think I was going to be able to make it in the UFC. I beat three guys in the UFC, but I'm, I'm still where I am. I'm developing. He goes, but because of the landscape of 205 pounds, you have to know that you could get a call tomorrow saying, hey, we need you to fight for the, the light heavyweight championship of the world. Are you ready to go? And it's not always ideal, but, ideal, but you have to run with these scenarios. Misha's a fascinating one from a study perspective because I fought out of extreme couture back when I tried to fight. And, uh, and so I trained with him a lot and I watched him develop up close and now from a further distance just with my analytical perspective of him. And he is very fascinating. What, he, what the, the tools that they've shaped him into. His ground game is phenomenal. His understanding of, of jiu-jitsu and his athleticism with the way he does, his wrestling, his comprehension of judo and leverage, all of that. Then, like so often is the case with these 
uber talented jujitsu guys, they develop striking as a secondary thing. And often what they miss early is root fundamentals. And Misha's one of those. His jab and cross and the fundamentals of striking are not as developed as his big picture ideas of striking. How he manages range, how he plays with you, his comfort. So he's developed, he's almost skipped some formative things and despite that, or maybe on some level because of it, he's become a very, very, very ultra good fighter. So it's strange watching the development of him. The one thing that he kind of left out shaped him in another way that's working. So it's really fascinating. He's also mentally really strong, super focused, very much a realist. Um, and I may have been one of those people who'd be like, yeah, Misha will be really good when he's in the UFC. I think he'll do well. No, I wouldn't have seen him developing to the level that we're seeing, which is super cool. And he's not, like you said, he still understands he's developing. So he's not even what he's going mm -hmm. to be yet. So I've gone from admiring Misha and liking him and thinking he'd be do well to really kind of watching this thing develop with huge potential now. I also uh, cut yeah. you off, mentioned Jordan Mann making his return. His dad, Lee Mian, our guy, uh, is in a boxing match tonight. So we want to uh, Ah, yeah. Lee, the yeah. best of luck. We'll, we'll invite Lee into the studio next week. We'll have Dwayne Ludwig coming in. He's going to do a breakdown with me next week. Boss Rootin' Guy. Uh, yes. Lee, yeah, and, Lee and, guy. and Dwayne know each other. Maybe we'll try to get him in here <laughs> yeah, together. That, that'd be crazy. Don't, yeah, that's, that's, a, little, that's a little insane. Uh, and we'll invite a few other people this week. We'll be on location. This is where you, you want to uh, check stuff out about UFC 206. We, your guys. We will have coverage all week long. We will be bringing you a preview show, weigh-ins. Myself and Robin will be there on Saturday night at the Air Canada Centre. It is UFC 206 week, kicking off Monday. I'll be getting drunk. <laughs>